suggest that he come in here to get on top of his pain, to give him some pain relief. Once he did say, if you put me in there to die. in the main hospital um, uh, and that and I I know I shouldn't say it but they don't get the in-depth care that you get in a, a unit like this. It's a wonderful sense of dignity. They don't take away your individuality in any way. So Nancy has hers put out into a, put into a smaller little side plate for us because it looks a bit um, and you can do more or less what you like, really, within reason. Um, have your family around you or not. Um, and it, it, it's a wonderful place to be. I think all they can really do here is keep you pain free and keep you comfortable, which is what they're doing. We can't ask for any more than that. I mean, he's not in any pain. If he's uncomfortable, they will come and they will adjust his bed, they'll put another pillow, or if he's cold, they'll give him an extra blanket. I mean, you know, he's been fed, he's been watered, all his drugs and everything is taken care of. That's, that's all they can really do. They can't really do any more than that, you know. Thank you. Is that everything you need? One, two, three. Yes, Yeah, got the salt and pepper? Yes. Got this one loosened? Yes, and please. we've had him for a week and a day, which I think surprised him in here that he lasted that long. But the care that he had for three weeks he was here was second to none. The nurses here, I mean, they're just so dedicated to what they do. Now, what kind of sauce do you want? I brought Nay and no. mayonnaise? No. No? no. What about salad cream? No. Nothing? No, you get it. Um, your facilities and, and being able to visit any time you want is such a benefit. Mm. That's what I like about this place. They don't just look after the patient, they really look after the family mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Keith had his birthday in here and we said can we bring a cake and that and they said no we'll have a party in the lounge so you know they said invite your friends and relatives so we had a fantastic party here for him which was lovely you know because he didn't know anything about it and so they wheeled him in. I now know that whenever I do a next charity event at work we will do it at the forest home. Whether I die here or not I'd be quite happy to. I couldn't have managed to write one. Couldn't have managed at all. Even my son in Australia came over for six weeks to stay with us when Keith when Keith was really ill. And it's become a real um focal point, a real meeting point for our family. Because we all work full time, you know, we just wouldn't be able to give him that 24 hour care that he actually needs. We're not medically trained like that, you know, there's only so much we can, we can just be there for him, you know. He was wonderful, he was um, always full of life. Uh, he used to like going to golf with my grandson. I've um, started writing a few memories of the past. I'm looking back at my life, really, so that my children have something to look back on. Because they were devastated because granddad was granddad and granddad always did things for them. Being in the hospice 
about a month. Hi Nancy. Yeah, of course you can, yeah. I can yeah. Okay. My husband okay. really, really in a lot of pain and his legs went, they suggested he come in here to get on top of his pain, to give him some pain relief. When I came in here, I, I felt pretty low, so low that I, I felt quite happy to die. He looked very healthy and we used to do a lot. We've been on holidays and a couple of cruises and that. So yeah, yeah, he was very, very, very healthy until he was diagnosed with cancer of the esophagus, which was a shock. The antibiotics weren't working, so my granddad decided that he didn't want any more, you know, just pain relief. He didn't want any more mm. antibiotics because they were making him worse and they weren't, they weren't working. So he's decided to stop all treatment. Um, and then he deteriorated quite a lot, hence why he's now here. Nice cup of tea, then. Yes, thank you very much. Right, okey-doke. And we had to go a whole year before he had a scan, and that's when they discovered it had gone into his liver, and then eventually into his bones. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a traumatic time. Quite a lot of people I had have signed a, a living will, I don't want a lot of intervention, I just want to die naturally and peacefully. I think everybody should have the right to choose when they, when they go. I consider that I've had quite a long life really, not as long as I'd hoped. <laughs> I thought I would live to 90 on and still doing the garden, but that hasn't been for me unfortunately. I think it's a taboo subject, which shouldn't be. Um, we don't like to think about it, that's why. We put it out of our minds. We want to get on with living. We don't want to think of a future if it's bad, which it always could be for me. See you tomorrow, Dad. And he says, oh, am I going to be here again tomorrow? Mm -hmm. If you never think it comes to yourself. Yeah, ready, shop scratch coming. Sorry, I know. Oh. It's always to somebody else. I, I thought I was quite immune from death and dying, but none of us are. She asked him if she could do anything more for him, and he asked, said to her, can you put me to sleep? Tomorrow, I am going to go home, which I'm very pleased to do. They even asked um, if he could take him to Switzerland, didn't yeah. We always thought that we would grow old together, because we'd always been together, we started going out when I was 15 and he was 16, so we've been together a lot, a lot of years.